Life doesn't have to be perfect to be filled with joy. Joy is so easy to tune into with a few of the right notes in your pocket. Let's take some life application as a pastor, author, and successful online entrepreneur. Today, I discuss notes on relationships, how to celebrate integrity, digging deep to matters of leadership, and how do we rejoice when we choose breakthrough instead of breakdown. Joy will come bubbling up from the secret things of the heart. Now make sure you listen to the end of the episode for a special and heartfelt prophetic word you want to receive into your life. Okay, I'll see you on the inside. Hello from the Pacific Northwest, this is Kristen from KristenWombach.com and you're listening to Intentional Now Podcast. Answer me this, how does a Baptist farm girl from Oregon stumble upon the mystical nature of Christ, the love of God? If you're like me, Jesus has redefined what you used to say yes to. Join me and my guest on a mystical journey. But before we talk about the spiritual woo-woo, you need to know I am totally sold out to Jesus. It's amazing what the love of God reveals. Welcome, welcome, family. How are you doing? Okay, I have got an episode that's supercharged just for you. So let me ask this. Raise your hand if this is you. Summer is really busy. Finding time is a challenge. Is this just me or are people a little testy these days? Are you tired of redirecting negativity in your own home? And if that squirrel chews on the rooftop one more time, I'll just... (laughs) Okay, it's good to laugh. Yeah, (laughs) take time to laugh at ourselves. And if laughing doesn't work, how about forgiving yourself? And believe me, I am at the top of the list this week. Okay, here's our breathe in and our breathe out. And one last save all. Are you listening? <laughs> James 1 2 from the mirror, of course. Temptations and contradictions come in different shapes and sizes and intervals. Their intention is always to suck you into their energy field. However, my friends, your joy in who you know you are, it leads you out triumphantly every time. Can I hear a big amen to that? Woo-hoo! <laughs> Your joy in who you know you are. Your joy, yep. Let's reiterate that just a bit. Your joy in who you know you are. You are saved by grace. And that is grace without a to-do list. It's free. It's free faithful, influential, connected to God here, now, right now, forever. You are uniquely and wonderfully made, discovering daily Jesus pouring through you. You are discovering daily Jesus pouring through you, recognizing his laughter and joy for your life in you. You are the Lord's permanent source of delight. Uh, Yeah, I know. That's who you are. 
the Lord's permanent source of delight. You are the kaboom, the dynamic of Holy Spirit causing faith to exceed any possible hesitation in hope. You are his. We are going to make a request from the Lord today. Are you with me? Let's remember in John 16, 24. Until now, you have not required anything in my name. Parentheses. This is us before his resurrection manifestation. But now, when you realize what is yours in my name, let's say that again, but now, when you realize what is yours in my name, then make your request and lay hold of that so that your joy may burst its banks. Are you with me? Today, we are going to burst the banks, you and and me. Kaboom! Fantastic. <laughs> Today's takeaways, four notes to easily tune into joy. The atmosphere has already changed, wouldn't you agree? Relationships, dump out the trash daily. Celebrate integrity. Do what's right because you are watching. Leadership and compliments. Testimonies, receive the energy of gratitude. Rejoice when you chose breakthrough instead of breakdown. And that extra icing on the cake. Make sure you hang around to the end. A prophetic word I am so looking forward to sharing with you. Okay? Life doesn't have to be perfect to be filled with joy. Amen? So join me in prayer, would you? Lord, <laughs> I sense another breathe in and breathe out. <sighs> Lord, that's better. <laughs> I surrender perfection. What might that look like? <sighs> Perfectionism in psychology is a broad personality trait characterized by a person's concern with striving for flawlessness and perfection and is accompanied by critical self-evaluations and concerns regarding others' evaluations. Lord, I surrender concerns evaluations, striving to be flawless, unrealistic perfection, critical of myself, I surrender judgments and negativity towards myself. Let's talk about the word surrender for a moment. Surrender is acknowledging that you have limited power over a person or situation. <laughs> and giving up ah, could be a desperate attempt to exert power and protect your heart. Lord, I surrender any wall, seen or unseen, known or unknown, that would attempt to protect my heart from your affirmations and love, and I pick up joy. Amen. Oh, I love it. I love praying with you. It's so awesome. Let's get right to it. Here, our first note that is stuck in our pocket by the Lord is on the area of relationships. Anybody need some assistance or help? Uh, okay. <laughs> So dump out the trash daily. So personally, I am walking through a season of rewiring my thoughts. I am addressing reoccurring patterns that do not serve me and they tend to trigger my emotions. So my question to the Lord was how do I deal with reoccurring patterns in others? We're talking about relationships here. Let me ask the question again to the Lord. 
how do we deal with reoccurring patterns in others? And this is what the Lord showed me about me. Can we talk transparent here? Uh, That's the only way I like to talk is transparently. Mm -hmm. He showed me a trash can. Mm -hmm. And I was digging into a trash can and pulling out these sticky notes of others' behavior. Kind of like, uh, well, what about this? And you did this and you said that. And I went, ooh. I have always committed myself to keep short accounts. Forgiveness, it's such a powerful tool. And and you just open up your heart and forgiveness is a lifestyle. But the but that kept getting me on the journey of rewiring is in the area of relationships that aren't currently in a season of change. Um, I'll say that again. And what about those relationships or loved ones that aren't currently in a season of change? Uh, Let's get back to our scripture. In James 1, 2, it says, Temptations and contradictions come in different shapes, sizes, and intervals. And their intention is, is to always suck you into their energy field. However, my friends, your joy in who you know you are leads you out triumphantly every time. So for me, for you to walk out triumphantly every time, first is realizing their intention. The intention is to suck you and I into the energy field. A personal behavior is a matter of choice. Yes, some of them have been around for such a long time that it doesn't even seem like there's a choice there. It's just this trigger and this pattern and this cycle that goes round and round. But it is still a choice not to address them. So my response to either positive or negative behavior is the same. It is a choice from my response from my side, how I engage and interact with it. So I have a personal hint. (laughs) Negative behavior is not to be confronted when on display. Mm -hmm. Negative behavior is not to be confronted when on display. And let me make this I'm going to give you a gross, but a standout kind of example. There's a purpose to me sharing this, okay? Because I want to give this visual that creates almost like a flag or a shockwave. And then what Holy Spirit does is he he reminds us, he goes, remember this? This is what it looks like. Uh, Okay, you'll get it. Here is my example of a negative behavior or me confronting a negative behavior. I love throwing the ball for my son's chocolate lab. She's a deer and I dog sit her every Wednesday. It's like Dash's play date. They just are best buds. BFFs, right? So the strangest thing has occurred more than once. She will be huffing and puffing and enjoying herself and she'll be carrying the ball back to me and in a moment of biological stress, she will put the ball down and then proceed to poop on the ball. Gross, huh? Yeah. Have you ever been around a dog that did that? Well, thankfully, she has never picked it up after that. Hmm. Now that is a very fragrant point. And I want to make that point about confronting negative behavior on display. It's like a ball sitting in dog poop. If you pick it up and throw it back, there is poop on both of you. (laughs) 
<laughs> now you understand why I took such a graphic explanation. <laughs> now back to the statement that the Lord said to me, dump out the trash daily. Yesterday's behaviors belong to yesterday. And this applies to myself. It doesn't matter if I or you or we or whomever, we've seen this same sticky note, this behavior a thousand times. It doesn't matter. The Lord has made a new day for each and every one of us. And this is what he's getting through to me. It's a new day, Kristen. And in this new day is mercy and his loving kindness. Those thought patterns that triggered from yesterday's trash are to be surrendered to the Lord today. Isn't that good? Mm -hmm. Celebrate integrity. This is number two. Doing what is right because you are watching. Yes, you. In celebration, we remind ourselves of our own commitment of integrity. And that is to be recognized between you and the Lord. It's, it's a positive choice. Yeah, it's to be celebrated that you have grown and allowed him to change your heart. In Philippians 4.4, 4, it says, joy is not a luxury option. Joy is your constant. Your union in the Lord is your permanent source of delight. So I might as well say it again. Rejoice in the Lord always. Rejoice with and in him. We celebrate integrity. So I know you and I, we both have many examples in this area. Yeah, we didn't just fall off the turnip truck yesterday. God has been transforming us for years. Amen. But let me share with you an integrity, for instance, okay? This is from my childhood, and I heard it from my dad. And my dad, a grocery man, he complained about this for years. He would be stocking and cleaning and refreshing the produce area of the store. And it always shocked him when people help themselves to tasting the fruit that was for sale. Moms would pick off the grapes and eat them, and then they'd hand them to their children, and they'd eat them. And grandmas would cull through, you know, dig through the fresh corn stalks. They'd be looking and looking, and they'd be stabbing their thumbnail into the kernels to see if the corn was fresh. Well, then they would put down the stalk they had just maimed and bruised and put a different corn stalk into their cart. Ugh, stories. So we celebrate, you and I, we celebrate picking up the garment that has dislodged itself from the hanger and fallen on the floor at the clothing store. That's you and I, right? We celebrate asking for extra hot sauce and not assuming that the hot sauce at the local taco shop is there for our home use. We go back, this is you and I, we go back into the store and pay for items that were overlooked in our cart. Mm, amen. This is you and I. Number three, leadership and compliments. Testimonies. Mm. Receive the energy of gratitude. Now, when I say that, we're all familiar that having a heart and a confession Fashion of gratitude just changes the atmosphere around you. But this week, the Lord taught me a different aspect of it. And I'll make this suggestion that many of my listeners, you and I, are leaders, right? We lead by example in our homes, our workplaces, our spiritual lives, and in different facets of the church. 
Leaders give examples and life applications directly from their own life experiences. We, we teach, we share, we counsel, we mentor, right? They share, leaders share them within the area of the influence that the Lord has given to them. And that is what we do. We open doors for others. We run ahead to learn and see, but we also leave breadcrumbs of humility behind so others can follow. And the practical experience, we share that with others. And this is my point. When others compliment and testify that what you shared or taught has produced a testimony in their own life, And it's given them breakthrough. Say thank you, of course. But I noticed that when I received the energy of gratitude, that testimony, it released into me, especially in my prayer closet. I took the gratitude that had been shared with me and I took it into my spirit. And it was so transforming. Uh, It was transforming. I don't quite know how to explain it or express it, but let me break it down just a little bit. In Ephesians 3.20, we're familiar with this, the glory belongs to God whose power is at work in us. By this power, he can do infinitely more than we can ask or imagine. Absolutely. We have known for years because it says the glory belongs to the Lord. But let me share it from the mirror. It gets closer to what that transforming feeling felt like when I took the gratitude into my spirit. So we can see the oneness, the celebration that's sown into this particular scripture. We celebrate Elohim who supercharges us powerfully from within. Our biggest request or most amazing dream cannot match the extravagant proportion of their thoughts towards us. Now to him that is able to do exceedingly, abundantly, above all we can ask or think, according to the power that works in us, never doubt God's mighty power to work in you and accomplishes. There's the transforming right there. He will achieve infinitely more than our greatest request, our most unbelievable dream and he will exceed our wildest imaginations. He will outdo them all for his miraculous power constantly energizes you. See right there. He will outdo them all for his miraculous power constantly energizes you. And that's what I perceived. That's what I felt when I took the gratitude in my private prayer closet. It's like I took it into the kingdom of heaven in his abode in me and I felt it energize me. Oh, so awesome. Number four, rejoice. Rejoice when you choose breakthrough instead of break down. Romans 12, 12, delight yourself in the pleasure of expectation. Prayer prevails victoriously under pressure. It prevails victoriously under pressure. See how much celebration the Lord has entwined for us because we choose him even when it it, when it's physically challenging. Okay, raise your hand, ladies. If you have ever told your emotions to shut up. (laughs) Okay, some of you raised two hands. (laughs) Amen. (laughs) Practical and mystical. We choose to focus on who we are 
how he shows us our dreams coming to pass. That's 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 why we're stepping into the kingdom of heaven, stepping through his flesh. Jesus is the door, the way, the truth, the life, right? That's why we do that. Because he tells us the truth so we could remember who we have always been in him. Truth. So if you didn't have a chance to listen to last week's Ascension Meditation, episode 117, I guarantee God will reveal to you a great truth about you. Go have a listen. So let me pull up another graphic picture, okay? I'm going to explain why I use these graphic pictures. If I asked you... Rejoice when you choose breakthrough instead of breakdown. If I asked you what breakdown looks like to you, let's take a moment to focus on that. Just a moment. It doesn't feel very good, does it? I know. That way, the way we act when we're at that breaking point, right? You know that I know that you know what I'm talking about here. And what comes out of our mouth is just like this stress at that breaking point. As ugly as the picture I shared with you in episode 114. Remember the joy checklist? And it was about God showing me what my behavior looked like. It looked like an upside down empty coin purse with snakes falling out. That's what the behavior looked like. Now, to bring some explanation to it, Dr. Joe Dispenza quotes it like this. When we have those visuals that we can see, and there they are right before us, even if they're graphic, he says to begin to observe the program means that you are no longer the program. I'll say that again. To begin to observe the program. So to begin to observe the behavior uh huh, means that you no longer the behavior. That comes meditations for breaking the habit of being yourself. I left the link in the show notes. I rejoice in my conversation that I heard from the Lord. I rejoice that I've been shown a wisdom and a truth. That truth means that I am no longer functioning in the old self, in the old patterns. And that is a victory. Hoo-hoo. Okay. Yay. Where there is love, there is joy. Mother Teresa, where there's love, loving yourself on your journey of transformation. Okay, let's just jump back over these four real quick here, and then we're going to get to some more goodies. Relationships. Dump out the trash daily. Celebrate your integrity. You appreciate what you do right Because you are watching your leaderships and compliments and testimonies receive the energy of gratitude. Number four, rejoice when you choose breakthrough instead of break down. Hoot hoot. I told you I had some powerful notes that would easily tune you and tune me to extra, extra All right, here, let me have a little bit of a quiet moment here as I share what the Lord shared with me on Wednesday night and I got to share it um, amongst my ecclesia and I just felt like, Lord, you want me to share this on the podcast, right? Mm -hmm. (sighs) Yay, yay. Okay. Holy Spirit, I ask for your help. Holy Spirit, 
we open our hearts to hearken to your voice and your truth. I was ascending into heaven and I noticed I had prayer beads on my left wrist. The prayer beads represented all the people that I pray for, the areas of influence, the places that I reach out and touch and they reach back and touch me. That's what the prayer beads represented to me. I saw myself sitting at the table of the Lord, and I was writing. Then I saw Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit came and pulled this large tent with four corners, and she buttoned down the tent pegs. She just, all of a sudden, there it was. And it was like a building. It was, oh, Holy Spirit created a hoopa over the table of the Lord. Then I saw this person, and I'm going to add you, my listener, as this person. And I saw you, and you were laying on the Lord's table, and you were covered, and the hoopa was arched over you, and you were looking up at the hoopa, and you were meditating. And you were breathing, a lovely scene. You were meditating and breathing. And you breathed out and you inhaled and exhaled. And when you exhaled and you breathed and your breath went up, the dew point of your breath began to gather on the inside of the hoopa. You breathed out and as if the dew point of your breath, it just created a mist and it stuck on the inside and began to build up on the inside of the hoopa fabric. Then I saw the condensation of your breath, of your exile, and it began to drip down the hoopa fabric. It got so condensed that it was weighty and it started to drip and drip. And every time it dripped from the hoopa to the ground to the earth, a sprout shot up. It just went zoop. There it was, a new sprout. It happened again and again, and the condensation from your exhale, which covered the inside of the hoopa, It dripped so many times and the sprouts kept popping up until there were sprouts that outlined the entire exterior of the hoopa on the earth. There were new sprouts and new life and new seasons and new resources and new plant light and new springs of life. That had come forth. The Holy Spirit gathered up the hoopa and the new sprouts being uncovered. They just grew exponentially and rose to the sky like like huge sunflowers reaching for the atmosphere. So the sunflowers, all those sprouts and them growing up created a structure, a framework of new life that was actually a mere representation of God's hoopa on the earth. And then I saw the father come and he put a new roof on it. God has built a new house of life with you from your breath. God has built a new house of life. God, we just give you praise. I just give you praise. Thank you. Thank you for that word that is received and growing 
in our hearts. Thank you for building a new house of life. Thank you for the joy, the joy that has exceeded and grown and bubbled over today, Lord. We give you praise. We give you praise. I encourage you to check out the show notes. I have lots of goodies there that I prepare for you. It's a wonderful place for us to connect. Thank you. Thank you for spending this time with me. Mm -mm -mm. (laughs) So good. It is always so good to spend this time with you. And you know, just to remind you, I don't believe in coincidences. No, I believe in the divine hand of the Lord that you and I are here together in this time, in this moment, for his purposes so he can pour himself over us and in us and through us. You be blessed. And I will talk to you again next week. Bye now.